the and and I like to also mention here once you create the derated opacity here the program allows you to say the way you can uh, set the allowable opacity for alerting when you run for example load flow is based on the actual derating factor you can do based on UGS calculation because in UGS you can do uh, a lot of uh, uh, optimization and you can calculate the opacity. I didn't go through that. Maybe if I have time, I'll do that at the end. And or you can just say user defined. So here, regardless of this, I want to put down as 400 and 400 amps. So what I'm saying is that uh, the program, although you can put to 487, but when you get to 400, give me alert. I don't want to go above 400. So that's a user-defined value. So based on that, um, the, uh, let's do some comparison here. What I have done here is uh, I'm giving you comparison of, uh, of four methods, but let's look at the first two methods, which are thermal calculations uh, based on near MACRAD and IEC 60287. When you look at these two standards, they're pretty much very close to each other, but uh, there are lots of differences still. And we have run it for a row of uh, soil uh, thermal resistance of uh, 110 and uh, uh, another one for 90 degrees, 90, row of 90, I'm sorry. Uh, the conductor temperature is 90, ambient temperature is 35, and uh, you don't have to know anything about the, the, the no base capacity is used for this. And you can see IEC gives you more current than near MACRAD. So near MACRAD is like by 2 to 3 percent more conservative than IEC in this particular cable and this particular installation that we did. This is a 2 by 3 dark bank. Uh, if you go to IEEE 399, uh, the results are more conservative, but it's very close still, but it's, it's uh, uh, closer to uh, the thermal analysis versus IEC 60364. Uh, 364 is a lot more conservative than, uh, than the, um, 399. Uh, with that, I'm going to go to the next item, which is really comparing NEC BS and IEC standards for uh, uh, for cable trays. And this particular condition, we have set the ambient at 40 degrees and the conductor temperature at 70. Uh, 70 degrees because you're limiting it because of splicing or termination or whatever you do. Uh, the delay and opacity you can see in all three methods comes out very close to each other. Uh, in this particular case, BS and IEC gives you um, identical results. NEC gives you a little bit more current in this particular case. So with that, I'm done with the cable amp opacity. And I'm going to go to the cable sizing. And uh, cable sizing, you do the cable sizing based on actual loading, of the loading current of the cable, voltage drop, more restoring voltage drop, short circuit, and overload protection. So we provide four different, five different methods of doing it. And uh, for loading, uh, like I was trying to mention, that you can do the loading based on operating condition, load flow results, full load amp, or user defined. Uh, when I go to ETAB and I go to the opacity page, when I select the uh, let me use cable two because I have set that up already. So here uh, my load current is uh, 225 amps and if I just have the load current here it would say for this particular uh, conductor for, uh, for this particular installation with 225 amps and uh, it's, I'm using 399 it says that I need to have uh, 225 amps um, and what is given me the requirement is 225 and the first size it finds is, is the 1 500 kc meal that gives you 232 amps and the next size it gives you one smaller size that it shows you really cannot go to the 350 in this case so I can do so by saying select now if I go to the voltage drop 
and uh, I say, for example, I want 2% voltage drop across this cable. This being a 5 kV cable, voltage drop is really very low, so it's not a really determining factor. Uh, on this one here, if I go with the short circuit, I have to run the short circuit, but I have not done it. I go to the protection page, and I can maybe just add a user defined and uh, add here, for example, uh, 30 kiloamps. I can either calculate from uh, running the short circuit, and the value comes in, but since I have not done it, I'm just going to put the value here. And on the ground, I can put line to ground also, but the line to ground is not used for the sizing, it, uh, unless it's larger value. And the clearing time, I can either put the user defined, or I can let the program look at the protection device upstream and calculate this. So let's say the time here is, uh, I don't know, point 0.5 seconds for this particular current. And go back to the sizing. And uh, what it does is now coming back, it's still same, <coughs> excuse me, it's still same size, it's uh, satisfying the short circuit, voltage drop, and load ampacity. Because it says minimum size, is 295 and I'm 500 so it's okay. So with that, the, um, the program of course is uh, looking at the fault current uh, clearing time directly from the protective device or the short circuit from the, from the system when you calculate that. And uh, there are two other protection, overload protection and overcurrent protection that is based on actual device, uh, protected device uh, upstream to the cable. In this case, would be like this, uh, this relay right here. It's 11.30 uh, California time. I'm done with my presentation, and uh, I guess it's time to turn this over to uh, Mr. Gomez. Here we go.